So dear friends, I'm very happy to greet you once again and speak to you. This last week has been a very important week for Bangalore Archdiocese as we had eminent guests in the Archdiocese, you know, Cardinal Mario Gresh from the Vatican visited us. So also the Apostolic Nuncio, His Excellency, Leopoldo Gerelli was also with us and of course almost 200 bishops from all over India were in meeting the CBCI, the Catholic Bishops Conference of India meeting at St. John's. And so it was a very beautiful week for all of us in Bangalore, especially for the church in Bangalore. Let me begin with the message of this week. You know, we are in the 33rd week of the year. And the 33rd week is almost the last Sunday of the ordinary season. And the next Sunday is the Feast of Christ the King. And this Sunday, the last Sunday as it were, the Church speaks of the last things, perhaps to remind us of the many things that can happen many things that are in store and of course the challenges before us and in this way the church prepares us for the feast of christ the king it's rather surrendering everything to christ the king who has answers for every problem and every question of ours to be the subjects of christ the king is the biggest experience for us so let me just take you towards the meaning of this Sunday's liturgy and the message. Of course, it speaks about the last things, the end of the world, when there will be a lot of persecutions, a lot of sufferings, a lot of challenges also. But the words of our Lord are very reassuring. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid also in those times when people challenge you because I will put my words into your mouth. You don't have to bother of what you, you have to say or what you have to witness. But this will be a strong opportunity to witness. You know, whenever the challenges come, our faith is tested. Our faith is put into question and therefore we have to give witness to our faith. It's a difficult moment. Many a time, seeing the opposition before us, seeing the difficulty and problems before us, we are, perhaps we can even think of solutions that are just ordinary. But challenging times speak or seek challenging solutions also. Further, Jesus says, no need of preparing yourself in so much preparation because this is the moment of crisis not only for you, but it's a crisis of witness for Jesus himself and his troops and therefore he will give you eloquence beyond your measure but be prepared for the important challenges of being betrayed even by your own people by your own parents perhaps by your relatives by your friends because they would like to have an easy passage and therefore Jesus says ultimately your perseverance will be the test of your life. It's a very nice message for us because we are also in challenging times. We have personal challenges, perhaps family problems, sickness in the family and so many other challenges. We have also social problems. We are also in the midst of certain persecutions, may not be a big way but a small challenges that are before us. As we know, in the times speak about certain challenges for us, also for the Christian community. And so in the face of this, the reassuring presence of God is very important for us to feel that ultimately it is God who serve, whom we serve, and it's God who gives us the answers for our life. I now take you to the 
This Sunday is also called the World Day of the Poor. It's a beautiful theme that the Holy Father Pope Francis has been is taken from the last 6 years. In 2016, first time he declared this Sunday as the Day of the Poor, World Day of the Poor. There is no need of a lot of explanations. Everyone knows what it means to be poor, what it means to live as poor and therefore the holy father has taken the theme or the message reading from the st paul's letter to corinthians chapter 8 9 which says for your sake christ became poor it's as good as reassuring us that we are poor perhaps in many things even the rich are poor in certain things the poor are of course are poor in physical things material things those perhaps who cannot bear the emotions their inner thoughts and turbulence perhaps they also in emotional crisis and emotional poverty there are many who are spiritually poor the spiritually poor having no confidence in themselves for no confidence in god either they have lost the faith and so there's no such thing as poverty that is only physical the poverty can be of many things also and therefore this day of the poor the holy father especially speaks about those who are economically and physically poor to say that it challenges us to see jesus in our brothers and sisters to see jesus in our brothers and sisters whom we see and therefore we must uphold values of the poor and make it a moment of grace for them of course more than our talks our spiritual discourses the poor need physical and material help and i'm sure that this day will some way in some book, perhaps form will inspire us to share what we have with the poor you know last sunday that's the 6th of November we had a beautiful day of the celebration of the migrants in Bangalore the migrants about 1500 of them gathered in the St Francis Xavier school or run by the St Joseph of Tarbes sisters in the auditorium there and they came in full colors their local dresses their ethnic headgear and so many other beautiful things and they were full of life the songs the dancers their own enthusiasm their own standing together was a big sign and consolation for us the pro- program was presided over by his eminence cardinal mario grech and he was so happy and you know he said in his remarks to the migrants he said i am also a migrant from from malta you know malta is a small island and it depends on the whole country perhaps the whole world and its neighbors for many of the things because a small country cannot have a factory a small country cannot have all the resources and therefore it depends and therefore cardinal grech told the migrants he said surely you are profiting a little from the city of bangalore perhaps some work that you get some education that you get some little company that you get some little recreation and perhaps things and materials available here in bangalore for you but he says don't forget you are also contributing to the society of bangalore in some way because when the migrants come they just don't come empty handed they come with joy they come with enthusiasm you know that day the programs we should have seen so beautiful programs they put up and so the culture perhaps even the taste and the recipes the food the service that they do you know if bangalore had to employ workers and workers how much it would be it's nice that the the migrant themselves come with their skills their masonry skills the building skills the technical skills and they make up so it's either both the ways that they profit the migrants profit from the place they where they go 
and at the same time the place where the migrants are is also profited this is what cardinal told them along with him were also about 16 archbishops and bishops from north india and they were so happy to meet their own people speak to them in their own language and make them happy and to say that the church loves you the church is with you they were also very grateful to me that bangalore is such a beautiful city and the church in bangalore is always welcoming the migrants and perhaps many of them might settle here for a long time and they'll become one of us studying our own language studying our own culture and perhaps tomorrow we may even get vocations from among the migrants who will be part of bangalore in our own language and culture the most important event that took place in bangalore this week that's the cvci meeting for almost 4 days and the ccbi meeting for 2 days the ccbi is catholic conference of the bishops of india that comprises of all the three rites the bishops the diocese of all the three rites the latin the siro malabar and the siro malankara this was there for 4 days and it was a beautiful gathering to see the bishops from all over india coming with their joys with their sorrows with their challenges with their problems and each one of them speaking loudly and to say that we are part of our indian nation at the same time we cater to the different needs of the different peoples you know many of these bishops came with a lot of anxiety a lot of problems and they were consoled because the theme was basically one that embraces everybody the synodality in the church the theme synodality combines everybody that we are all in a movement that we are all in a, a pilgrimage and the one who leads the pilgrimage is not necessarily the bishop or the priest perhaps it's the people i suppose you have seen that logo of the of the synod that we had for discussions in many of our groups you know this logo in this logo the procession or the perhaps the small group is led by a small child behind that we find someone with a wheelchair and then the old people and the bishop there is one bishop with a cap who is almost at the end meaning to say that it's not the church the bishops that lead you perhaps even the people can take a leadership and the basic tenet of this of this synodality was listen listen to the people listen to the groups listen to those who are outside listen to those who are far away and bring them closer to the church make them part of the church this was the theme of the cbci and at the end of which the new office bearers of the ccbi are also elected as you may have been knowing cardinal Valley, cardinal gracious was the president so far but because of his age he has moved out and we have a new office bearers for the the cbci the president is archbishop andrews talat he is the archbishop of trichur who is the president and then there are two vice president the first vice president is archbishop antony swami of madras mailapur he is a latin bishop the president is a, a siro malabar archbishop and the second vice president is bishop joseph mar thomas bishop of batteri and he belongs to the siro malankara church the secretary of the cbci remains the same that is archbishop felix machado of wasai so four of them make the office bearers of the cbci and they will take the church forward in the years to come perhaps another 2 or 4 years soon after the cbci we also had the ccbi meeting the ccbi is a consist of the bishops of the latin churches the latin dioceses and this also took place in the same st john's medical college both the meetings and since all the bishops stayed together that so it was a beautiful experience for us also to exchange to hear to listen and especially for the mission bishops to see their experiences how they managed so beautifully you know some of the mission bishops were 
आओ प्रीस तो फिर यंग प्रीस आर सर्विंग फॉर एग्जांपल जबलपुर द बारेली एक्सेट्रा दोज बिशप्स आर आल्सो वेरी हैप्पी एंड एक्सप्रेसिंग सो मच सेटिस्फैक्शन विद द सर्विस ऑफ आर प्रीस दे दो इट वाज जस्ट फॉर अ ईयर दे से इट वाज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर देम सो दीज आर द टू मीटिंग्स दैट टुक प्लेस इन बैंगलोर and it was a great experience for us on sunday that's today 13th of november we also have an important meeting or rather a gathering of what we call the cream of the arch diocese in different professions in different areas in different perhaps groups and leadership in the arch diocese we are basically we have categorized our leaders into 10 groups of professionals the doctors the lawyers the teachers the entrepreneurs the politicians the bureaucrats the cultural icons and so so many of these categories and from each category we have taken the three persons so in this what we call the think tank which will also think about the whole of karnataka perhaps the certain policies that are needed in certain areas and also certain expressions certain programs that we can conduct it besides these 30 members that were elected we have also co-opted for about 30 other persons the stalwarts in their own in their own areas in their own fields and together with the these 60 members we also have the 14 bishops of the archdi of the whole karnataka region and so along with the bishops along with these experts and along with uh, a few other persons of the organizing committee we will be having our think tank meeting this is the second think tank meeting that we having the first we had on the regional level in 2019 and 2020 sorry and now we have it after about 3 years in this 3 years of corona we could not have these meetings of the think tank and so we will be having this meeting on sunday that's 13th november at st john's once again at st john's and surely we will have certain plans and certain challenges before us which we will try to meet along with this think tank group that we have formed i now take you to the question which is a, a difficult question for me the question reads as such is remarriage after divorce always adultery is remarriage after divorce always adultery first of all marriage for christians is a sacred sacrament it's a sacred bond and this sacred bond in this sacred bond we say that god brings two people together and blesses them in the sign of the priest blesses them in the sign of the cross to seal them together of to make them of one mind one heart one soul one body so th- this we call a valid catholic marriage and a valid catholic marriage which is celebrated in the church with full consent of the parties with full desire and wish the full consent the form that is done according to the church and without any impediments or perhaps any pin pricks or any problems as such is a valid marriage and we read in the gospel of mark chapter 10 verse 9 which says what god had joined that no man put asunder what god had joined that no man put asunder so there is a difference between a marriage bond that is sacred and a civil marriage or civil contract or perhaps civil breaking up also you know a contract a civil contract can be broken but marriage is not just a civil contract it's a sacred bond and therefore it cannot be broken even what god has joined that no man put asunder perhaps even god will not try to put asunder what is validly instituted as a marriage in the church we speak of what's called annulment of marriage what is annulment annulment is to show that the marriage that has taken place in the church had did not have one of these elements and therefore no marriage took place 
it's like uh, an electrician who puts the wires together and he says unless both the positive and the negative go together with all the elements that are there they will not be current you can have bundles of wires with you but if one is not a positive one is not a negative something is missing and therefore in the annulment of the marriage what is tried to be proved is that there is an element which was not there from the date of the day of the marriage from that day onwards that marriage never took place because this connection was not there what are these three things there are the three things one is full consent perhaps the partners did not have a consent one was forced one pretended something like that therefore consent was missing if you prove that consent is missing annulment can be given the second one is the impediments we call it there are different sets of impediments which are legally binding for example age age if a minors marry the church respects the law of the country and says 18 and 21 so before that no a marriage between perhaps close relatives like the brother and sister it's invalid a person who is impotent tries to marry it's invalid so there are so many of these things that make the marriage invalid if there is if you show there was one impediment which the church says is an impediment not just small irritants i didn't like the color of the girl the girl didn't smile the girl is bobbing her head these are not impediments the impediments are serious objections to marriage so if you prove then the marriage can be annulled and the thirdly the form the form means that it has not taken place according to the liturgical form in the church where we request that at least the minister is there the minister could be the priest it could be also an exceptional to circumstances even a lay man who has been allowed two witnesses and a particular form formula that is used that i will be faithful to you in sickness in life in death this is the perhaps the formula that is there if it is not there it was not done according to the form it can be annulled beyond that to have a civil divorce perhaps in certain cases of the annulments because the government does not respect our annulments in the church we also advise the parties to seek what we call the civil divorces in those cases where annulment has been approached or successfully obtained so they can obtain the what we call the civil divorce but to say that civil divorce alone is enough that i can go into another marriage when the other spouse is legitimate spouse is still alive and has not perhaps separated etc this is not allowed and this is not correct and therefore to have one wife after the civil divorce and to have be having the another wife that is sacramentally married to you it's like a bigamy in the church and it's not allowed and for those who are in crisis especially those who have gone gone for civil divorce for reasons perhaps beyond them they could try if they could get the civil sorry the church annulment also if the church annulment is possible and got for those parties who have applied for the civil divorce then it's okay otherwise civil divorce alone does not justify a second marriage without the annulment from the church So my dear brothers and sisters I leave you at this I wish you a good week we have also the children's day that is coming up closely 14th of November and I wish all the children especially those in the families I hope you will get something from your parents if not anything a big hug from your parents on the children's day happy children's day to all of you my dear friends please do share your feedback your impressions and your experience or send a message to the email address as you find on the screen archdblr@gmail.com and you also have the phone number the mobile number wherein you can send your message or uh, whatsapp on this number archbishop is ready and waiting to answer your questions If you have any question, any doubt, any uncertainty or there's no clarity upon something, you can ask those questions 
and with the discretion that the Archbishop will surely answer these questions in the weekly feature Shepherd's Voice. Thank you and we look forward to the next episodes.